Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to just apologize before I start. Um, I can't hear myself because I'm still recovering from a cold. Um, so, <laughs> so if I sound strange, then that's why. And I might just go into a coughing fit, so I apologize in advance. Um, thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Um, I'm going to be talking to you very briefly about the policy process around work integrated learning. Um, I have been appointed by the Department of Higher Education Training to put together a draft policy, which will then obviously go to various stakeholders and everybody will have a look at it and make their own comments and so on. But um, I'll, I'll be talking to you about um, what is the kind of point of departure, uh, what we think should go in there and why it should go in there and, and the kind of frameworks for the policy. Um, and I'll try and be very brief. Right, that's, um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on um, the conceptual frame. And the acronym there is the acronym that's currently uh, preferred by the Department of Higher Education Training, um, which is workplace-based learning. Okay. Now, I know that we all are quite familiar with the term work-integrated learning, uh, but the department felt that workplace-based learning is probably a broader term which will encompass something like will. Um, and various other forms of work, workplace learning. So we're looking at a conceptual frame very briefly for workplace-based learning. Um, I'm going to give you just one or two um, aspects that, ca that came out of the international literature. Um, in other words, what's the theory that sits behind workplace-based learning? And then very briefly look at the purposes of workplace-based learning. And I think there it's quite important because I'm assuming that quite a lot of you are actually from companies and you're not necessarily from education and training providers, um, so or universities or colleges and so on. Uh, so you may want to adjust the kind of purpose of workplace-based learning to an organizational environment, uh, uh, your firm environment. Um, then I'm just going to very briefly touch on the policy context for workplace-based learning and then look at what I think is quite a useful organizing principle um, around which the policy will be developed. Okay. Now, this is awkward because I can't read <laughs> what's up there. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time around this, but I think um, or those of you who have implemented some form of work integrated learning or some form of, of workplace based learning will recognize that there, that the, there is a, a huge educational value to implementing something like that in the workplace. Or then if it is part of your program, your training program, or if it's part of your learning program, um, there's huge benefit to that. And I don't want to spend too much time on that. But internationally, it's already recognized that there is huge educational value in relation to the implementation of workplace-based learning. Um, it does all those things. It eases transition. And I heard somebody else spoke, uh, spoke about unemployable. And that's really a huge indictment if we talk about our students as being unemployable. But certainly, will or workplace-based learning um, enhances that transition between learning and work and make, certainly make people much more employable for various reasons, not only because of the technical reasons, and I'll talk about that just now. But I think what is important about uh, workplace-based learning, it is about learning. Um, it's about learning and it's not about working. Um, I like the phrase, uh, I've coined the phrase as a, as a learner worker, um, and whether it's a new entrant to your organization as a full-time employee, or whether it's a student who's going to be there for a relatively short period of time, those people are learner workers. They are only learning to become workers. But the point is that workplace-based learning is about learning. Um, it is also about working, but it is about learning to become a worker and learning in the workplace. Um, there's your tentative definition. This is the definition that was developed by the department. I won't go read through it now. Um, there are certain issues around it, but you can also see the key issues is that it is an educational approach. Now, the reason why I'm raising that is because if we start um, uh, 
um, having the expectation that workplace-based learning is going to solve our economic problems, then we're going down the wrong route. I don't think that's the purpose of, the, of this kind of policy, but it certainly will enhance um, what we want to see in economic development. But we can't make the workplace-based policy responsible for turning around the economy. And I know that a lot of people have actually been speaking about it in the way that the policy will now solve our economic problems, and it's not true. So the point is, it is an educational approach, and it's an approach where it helps students to apply what they've learned in a, in a real workplace. Um, but up to so far, so far we've only, uh, we haven't had a policy. Um, there's been a policy vacuum. Various institutions, particularly the University of Technology, have implemented workplace-based learning for many, many years. But even there, it's been implemented in completely a policy vacuum. It's an unfunded mandate, but still, the programs require that their students do some kind of uh, workplace-based learning. Uh, so there's, the, the, there's been issues around it. And so what's happening now, as I've indicated, is that there's a national policy being developed for the whole sector. And there are issues around that too, because it means that there's not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, we'll have to, take, uh, we'll have to um, remain conscious of the fact that will is uh, practiced very differently in different contexts. And that's why I'm saying you need to identify what's the purpose for, for workplace-based learning for you in your organization or in your training center or whatever the case may be, and then use the policy accordingly. Um, okay, just one point that I want to make, and I'll come back to that. Um, I've already mentioned this issue around uh, workplace-based learning is about learning, but one point that I actually found um, quite um, evident in the international lit literature is that there's not a one-on-one -on -one um, uh, relationship between what is in the curriculum and what is in workplace-based learning. I think the reality is that we have to recognize that unless your workplace-based learning is two years or three years, um, like in the form of an apprenticeship, you simply can't cover the whole curriculum that you have taught at an institution. So you have to choose this, the kind of exit level outcomes perhaps, or the most important, um, the core parts of the qualification which then will have to be um, implemented in workplaces. But there's no one-on-one -on -one relationship to that, and there are various reasons for it. And maybe I'll just mention one reason, is that, for example, if you're an IT student, then at the institution you will learn certain, certain skills around IT, but when you get to a workplace, the workplace may not a, use the same software or may not have the, B, the, the, the same needs. So, so what we teach them in institutions also needs to be, in a way, recontextualized. And that's a term that's very often used in relation to workplace-based learning, is that there must be a recontextualization of what, te what we teach them in the training center or the institution and how that gets applied into the workplace-based learning. So it's never going to be possible to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with what you teach in the curriculum and what actually happens in the, in the workplace. Um, okay, I'm rushing through this. Um, this is kind of a start of a discussion about the concept of frame of workplace-based learning. Um, and I've divided it into three main areas, um, namely what is the philosophy, when does it take place, and how does it take place, and then sometimes where. Where does it take place? Okay, so if the philosophy is on your left-hand side here, yeah, it's a pedagogical approach. As I said, it's an educational approach. It's an approach whereby we want to enhance learning. Okay, and that's that's pedagogy. We want to enhance learning through that. Then we speak about things like work integrated learning, cooperative um, education, service learning, and so on. If it is about when it takes place, then we speak about that second column. Is it, in the program, pre the program, after the program, or is it a kind of a sandwich program? So there are various ways in which you can time the workplace-based learning, and the curriculum will also um, indicate when the timing would be appropriate. Then the method, how do we do it? We do it through experiential learning, or workplace-based learning, or through articles, you know, some of these terms, practicum, shadowing, and so on. Various, various terms that you can use for that, and then the sites 
of learning. And in some cases, you would have a multi-site. You would have a student going to one organization for a couple of months and perhaps go to another organization for another couple of months in order to get the full spectrum of what you want them to um, experience in the workplace. So that's just the beginning of a discussion around it. Um, it's, um, it's not the same thing. You don't. You, you, we, we often use these terms interchangeably, but they're not, they're not intended to be used that way. Then, um, uh, also part of the discussion around the conceptual framework, I've got, I uh, know there's a light here. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, technology. I guess if you look at the kind of um, uh, uh, horizontal and vertical axes, then if you look at the characteristics, so it could be either very little, which we then call work exposures. In other words, maybe a week or two. Do you really want to call it work integrated learning? But it could be work exposure. And there's evidence that even that is actually greatly enhancing people's experience of their own learning, okay? So even a short period is actually better than nothing, all right? Or it could, to the very other extreme, it could be a very long period, like an apprenticeship, which takes two to three years or longer, depending on the type of program. So it could be that kind of character. You can any, anywhere from there to there, you could have various forms of, of, of work integrated learning. It could be less time, as I said, or it could be more time. And then the third um, axis is this issue about whether they are paid, whether there's a stipend, whether it's a full-time person, in other words, you know, apprenticeship by its very nature is already an employee. A learner in a learnership is an employee, but quite a lot of the other students are not. They're interns or they're candidates or various other, they're not actual employer, uh, employees. So that also has some kind of bearing on how you're actually going to implement your, uh, your particular program. So those, the characteristic time and timing, remuneration, whether it's funded, whether it's unfunded, all will have an impact on the various ways in which it's implemented. Okay, let me just see. I think the second um, bullet there is what I wanted to say. Uh, the defining characteristic is that working and learning are coincident. They're happening together. When you place a student in a workplace, then um, he doesn't, he, obviously he or she has learned in the institution, but when they're placed in the workplace, then it becomes a question of now it becomes coincident and the one influences the other. So this is the, oops, sorry, the point that I made, the two are complementary, learners are workers and workers are learners. So learner workers. Then um, this I think is also quite important in terms of the literature, is that at the heart of the work-based learning lie the challenge of bringing together at the point of use different types of knowledge underpinned by different values and logics. And I'll speak a little bit about that again. But the point is that the logic of a workplace is completely different from the logic of an institution. Of an institution, the logic is, is teaching students to uh, master a particular curriculum. In a workplace, the logic is about work. It's about production. It's about being productive in that particular organization. So the logics are completely different. Not many workplaces are particularly focused primarily on learning or on teaching new entrants, okay? That is part of their process, but it's not their core process. So those logics are very different, and that's why sometimes it can be very difficult to implement a, a workplace-based program in a, in a workplace. Um, yeah, that's enough about that. I can make this presentation available if people are interested. So this is, the department is actually broken up um, in their deliberation about workplace-based learning, um, um, broken, broken up workplace-based learning's purpose in this way. And they say, okay, so it can either be to gain a qualification, and it's, we, we're familiar with these, so learnership, apprenticeship, or an internship. So if it's a part of the requirement for your qualification, that is the, that's the purpose of that. Or it can be to acquire professional registration. We're also quite familiar with that. Those are the people who do articles or who do um, you know, a professional internship or that type of thing in order to become a chartered accountant or whatever the case may be. But that is to 
acquire professional registration with a professional body, okay? But that's over and above and apart from the qualification that you've already attained. The best example is the BCom accounting. You're not yet a chartered accountant if you leave, if you leave your, uh, your university program. You still have to undergo um, a whole series of quite stringent extra work and learning before you can become a chartered accountant. Or then, and this I think is where probably the bulk of our students lie, is to gain work experience, okay? And the department has decided to call it graduate internship, and that then is where we talk about students where their employability is improved simply because they've had that experience in the workplace. So that is actually quite a key issue. Okay, I'm not going to um, raise any of the issues here, just to say that um, the policy context, um, which is quite astounding, because I've been working in policy for a very long time, and this is the first time that I've come across uh, various non-education policy and education policies that actually agree on something. And in, in this case, it is about workplace-based learning. So that was quite astounding that the policy framework, our current policy, policy framework, is so enabling of, of workplace-based learning. Um, yeah, just to show you the extent of the problem. Youth, oops, sorry. There you are. Uh, wrong button. This is, for, for South Africa, 89% of our youth have no work experience. So then when we talk about unemployable, it just hurts when you say, you know, 89% of our youth is unemployable. And that's simply because they haven't had um, workplace-based experience. Of course, it's not as simplistic as that, but it is quite a huge problem. Okay. Then this I just want to spend a little bit of time on. Um, this is what I believe is, is a useful organizing principle and certainly what I will be using for, for drafting the framework for the policy. And it's these six or so um, aspects of what people learn when they're in a workplace. And they're all important, and that's also why I said just now, you, don't, um, you can't expect to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship between your curriculum and what happens in the workplace. But also that there are other things that students learn in workplaces which are very valuable. And, the, and they are, enculturation is the first one. There's learning how we do things here. I mean, imagine yourself now as a new person in a new workplace. And one of the first things you have to learn is, where are the toilets? Uh, you know, where's my, where's my desk? Um, how, when do we have tea? When do we have lunch? And how do we, so learning how we do things there, it's actually a very important skill. It's fitting in, okay? Then the second one, and there's your, your curriculum issues, building competence. Learning to achieve the occupational standard. We just heard about the HR standard. Learning how to become a better um, HR practitioner or learning how to become an HR practitioner because when you come in there with your HR degree, you're not yet an HR practitioner. You're a learner HR practitioner and you start at the bottom. So that is the learning about the uh, occupational standard and that would also be <coughs> excuse me, in relation to the professions where the individual is seeking a license. Then understanding the context. Um, in other words, you know, what is the context within which the organization works? What is our competition? Is there any competition? And so on and so on and so on. Improving practice. And this is important. And this, I think, is one, is one thing that is often uh, disregarded when young students are in workplaces. It's learning to contribute to the organization. So expect, as a, as a learner worker, expect of that learner to, to contribute to, 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 to the organization. And you know, various projects can actually be introduced in that way, which will allow students in a safe way to contribute to the organization. Fitting in, very, very important, learning about the ethics, professional practice, social context of workplaces. Many people who have been working in this field have been saying that students don't know they must be there on time. They don't know that they, you know, when work starts at eight, then you must be there on time. Okay, so understanding the field, it's the professional field, and then finally, and which is also critically important, is this issue about an identity, learning about the identity of the vocation or profession. And that's also another thing that we 
very often disregarded. And it's not the soft skills. The soft skills are also important. But these things are real things that we should actually incorporate in any kind of workplace-based program. I'm done. Um, <laughs> um, I just want to mention um, maybe just one thing. Yeah, so yeah. Um, is the pedagogic imperative at odds with social economic demands? And that's what I mentioned just now, is that we must remember that workplace-based learning is an educational approach. Yes, there are advantages in terms of um, economic demands because it does make people much more employable. It does introduce that young person to the workplace and that workplace is much more likely if they like that young person to employ him or her. So yes, it does do that too. But the main and the first issue is that it is an educational approach. But we shouldn't conflate the two. We, sh we should hope that the one benefits the other, but we shouldn't conflate the two. Um, then very often there is an issue about Placement thinking, is it just about getting bums on seats, as many as possible students into workplaces, or is it really about engaging those students in real learning? And my final point is that what we must remember is that this, this policy will give guidance and it will give a broad framework for how um, workplace-based learning can be implemented, and certainly linked to that is how it will be funded through the various uh, structures both the department and the CETAS and various others and so on. But um, what we must remember, it's not a quick fix. And if our training programs, and that's the issue there, if our training programs don't lift the expectations or don't lift the skills, then we can't expect workplace-based learning to fix it for us. So that's really what I want to, what do I want to end with is that, yes, we believe it's going to enhance people's um, expe uh, 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 possibilities of getting work, of becoming more employable, of being introduced in a gentle way into workplaces and so on, but it's not a quick fix. It's not a quick fix for the system. And we still have to do the hard work um, in the training center, in the institutions, for them to actually benefit from workplace-based learning. Thank you.